Hi. Welcome back to A Nomad Tale. This episode is the best episode ever. We're gonna kill things we've never killed before. We're gonna get things that we never got before. And perhaps most crucially, we're gonna have more fun than ever before. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, so here we've got a wormhole that had just spawned. And we can actually see that it's just spawned because it says it has not yet begun its natural cycle of decay and should last another day. Which is pretty cool. So that means this wormhole has over a day left. I think they are um, bigger, right? I don't know. They certainly are very vivid, either way. So we have some boys right outside of Oidama who just ganked a Gila. And they were cool enough to give me the kill mail. Yeah, something like a Gila, that's the kind of ship you should probably strip of fittings and uh, not run through Oidama. <laughs> that would be my recommendation <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Now, I believe the map has shifted so much to where Waydama is probably not that big of a system anymore. Because I was able to just walk through it and there was nobody there. Wait a second, Captain Incura? Is that the name of the Raven pilot I killed? Huh. Weird. Anyway, kind of drifted off on a tangent once again, but that's kind of what this series is. Starting one thought and then <laughs> ejecting to another. <laughs> Dang. I had a couple of these loot boxes and I just want to say I think everybody has a responsibility to say this anytime they're given the chance. Loot boxes as a mechanic is just gambling and it's not good and it quite honestly takes advantage of people generally speaking, so I tend to stay away from this type of stuff. And I don't mean to lecture, but I also don't like normalizing this style of stuff, so... Um, with that said, I did have a couple of them sitting around, they just gave them to me, they, you know, like any company interested in getting money, they give you a couple to try it out, so... We had them sitting around, and I just opened them for the hell of it. Um, and one of them dropped a 50 mil item, so... This is a pretty... pretty decent example of, perhaps some of the psychology that goes into getting people hooked on gambling, right? Because if I was maybe half my age, a little bit less experienced in life, and I saw this thing that could give me a 50 mil item for 5 mil, I'd be kind of interested in knowing if I could exploit that, but... Now I kind of view this as predatory and not at all compelling, so... Um... Yeah, we won't be buying loot boxes. But we'll take the 50 mil this time. And, uh... Be happy. You know what it's like? It's like getting a scratch off from somebody at work. And winning, like, 100 bucks on it. I'm not gonna go buy more scratch offs, but I'll take that 100 bucks, you know what I mean? So... I think... I just found another... Citadel. In trouble. Oh, f yeah. I'm gonna have to be quick. I'm gonna have to come back here in the cheetah. So we're in a class two with a C4 and a high static. And I found these two citadels that curiously have the word reinforced on it. So, oh my gosh, look at this. The Stratios now. Ooh, that, that shield timer is gone, though. So, that doesn't get an armor timer. So that thing's gonna die in 20 hours. Whoa. This is vulnerable as well. There's two people in there as well. It's crazy. How do we run into this Actually, maybe I should go get the high sec connection real quick. 
That's probably prudent. Oh, 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 who's this? A hair in there. Alright, I'm not scared anymore. I'm bringing the Proteus in here. And I guess the cheetah is gonna go... Let's get the... Let's get the Sig first. This is crazy. How do we run into citadels like this? I didn't even look for this. It came to me. Wait a second. Why is there a bestower at one? Is there something near me at one? Oh, there is. Okay. It's a custom talk. I was like, why is this bestower coming through here? Yeah, he's at the Poco. <laughs> I almost freaked out. Alright, so we got the high set connection. If we want to put a seed in here, we could... Whoa. Someone just splashed it. Who's that? Who the hell just joined the channel? Monocle? Bung? I don't even know who splashed that. I don't even see it. It's a Stratios. Holy shit. Look at him. Yo, oh, I want that. I'm warping the Proteus right there to it. Pretty sure the Proteus would chew through that, but he would obviously get through. I would need the webs. Oh sh! He won't have. A, he won't be able to get through if I land on him right now. Oh sh! Is he gonna get lazy with this? Maybe. I'd have to decloak him. It is a Stratios. But maybe he's gonna get lazy. We just need him to be lazy here for one minute. Oh sh! Do I run the cheetah through and bait him? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, he's gonna warp off? No. No, no, don't do it. Fuck. Fuck. I missed my chance. Alright, fuck the cheetah. Cheetah's gone. Getting the damn other thing. How cool would it be to kill Stratios? That's like a huge kill. We didn't reveal our intentions there with the cheetah. I'm sure he can check me out, but... So I found that in EVE, if somebody is openly dissuading you with text or speech or language from attacking them, they're probably worth attacking. You should dissuade people from your behavior and your setup and your planning, not your words. If you name your ship bait, people are going to kill you anyway. As they've named this citadel, logged off Orca inside, which kind of... Supposed to dissuade ya. Alright, so this has been reft for... Five hours. So... That means that about 1500 somebody came and reft it, but there's no kill mails at all. I'm not too sure what's going on with that. But I'm perfectly content sitting here, chilling. Watching the hole, watching the pass. The Citadel, sorry. It just so happens that their static opened up randomly into a system with a deranged stalker with four accounts living in it. Unfortunate stuff. I want that Stratios. You notice how I don't re stop recording anymore, I just keep it rolling. I feel like I've been burned too many times. Yeah, so obviously we're not gonna wait 20 hours, but... We could potentially try to put a seed in here and get footage of it again. <laughs> the, guy, <laughs> the guy in the Stratios, he legit, I, I mentioned it, but he legit lost a pacifier with a Zugma analyzer. 560 mil total bill on that kill mail. He lost it to a 30 million wolf. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, Chronicle X, if you're if you're watching this, I'm sorry, buddy. But that one was bad. I think it's time to use a uh, Helios. Watch Stratios. If I had a bubbler, maybe I could have got him there. Because I'm starting to realize how polarization can be gamed, right? Especially on a high hole like that. So if that Stratios jumps out into high sack and then jumps right back in, just like he did. 
then I could just drop a bubble on the wormhole and go for the decloak. And if I hit the decloak, I mean, dude's straight up dead, right? He has no chance because he can't even kill the saber. The saber just goes through the hole. <laughs> He's in high sec, nice and safe. And then the Proteus just claps up the Stratios. Stratios is not going to have a chance against 85,000 health and like 700 DPS. It's moving. Me moving. Moving. Moving back. Oh, he's just manually violating. Sick. Oh, he's going down. He's just having a fly. I respect that. So these guys got a lot of whiffs of me, by the way. I'm not undetected this time. They saw probably my probes from the initial wandering that popped up. And they also saw me at the high set connection in the cheetah. Not to mention, if they were watching the static, then they would have seen both of my tier 3 cruisers, but I suspect they're not. So we're assuming that we're made on this one. So we're going to have to think twice about any uh, encounters that involve tanky ships. Oh, somebody logged. So I think this guy right here is the guy that we want to try to kill. I think he's the most brave person in his corp. Just based off of his losses, I don't know him, obviously. Can I bring a all in here? Um, do I have anybody that stealths? <laughs> ah, crap. I want to watch this get blown up if somebody comes. Oh, there's the Stratios, there's the Stratios. Yo, no way. Where you, go? Where you going, bud? Where you going? Chronicle, he's blind to nothing. Look at the Stratios, just slowly. <laughs> it's, it's really slow. Oh no. Oh, he's going for another one. He's going for, going for seconds. Oh, he's gonna push him. Yeah, push him right off the, push him right off the tether. You won't. No balls. You won't do it. Man, how scary would it be to have somebody roll up in your system with your system name followed by the word seed when you have a raft building? That'd be so spooky. But here's the difference between this time and last time because this time um they are on the defense immediately right they are already reft they're spooked they don't seem like they're gonna do much other than try to defend the ref whereas last time they were on the offensive they were planting the astra and defending it like proactively so they thought they had control of the system these guys know they don't have control so I guess it comes down to, do I feel like waiting forever to try to kill one of these? Or do I feel like just planting the seed and convoying them and seeing how they react? Tough one. Oh, oh, where's the Stratios going? Where's he going? Dude, it's still fair game if he warps off and does something stupid. Oh, he's gonna orbit now? Gotcha. He stopped orbiting and went back to the pass as soon as that magnate showed up. Stratios docked. You gotta wonder if he's gonna... I wonder if he's maybe gonna try to gank the relic site. Would that not be hilarious? Man, if he walks to that relic site, I'm gonna fly that magnate in here. I'm gonna go right to it and try to bait him. Oh my god, where's he going? He actually did it. 
Oh my god. Holy crap. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that exact plan I just said. I'm gonna bait this Stratios. Okay, so we have our Proteus and about to be Loki out of ping on the Relic site. And we also have the Magnate in the fleet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in. We're gonna start scanning that, that signature down into VAT. And we're gonna see if we can bait this guy into losing a Stratios. I'm so sure about this. My name gives it away, I think, right? He just decloaked right here, you see this? Go back through the hole. Now we warp to the hole. And now we see if he goes through. If he comes back, maybe we kill him? I don't have no idea. Damn, how badass would that be if I made the Stratos chase me and caught him off the wormhole? Alright, let's put the Loki on the high perch. Sorry, Proteus on the high perch. We'll leave the Loki here. Oh, there's the Stratos. Is he gonna go through? Oh my gosh, no f***ing way. He's too curious. Is he really gonna get himself killed? Just find it's hard to believe he would do that. Oh, he waited out his polarization. Now we bait him. I think we're green light. Prophecy still isn't here. See if we can pop this dude. I think we did it. I think we understand polarization now. Give him heat. We did it. We did it. We did it. Mil. Oh, fuck. Loot it. Get nervous. 82 mil. I'll take that. I'll take all this. All this. Shoot your wreck. And that's a Stratios kill, our best kill to date. We don't even have to go through the hole. We can literally just warp off. Man, that was so smooth. All right, that was worth the hour and a half of recording with almost no action. So I kept screaming, I'm understanding polarity now because what happened, if you didn't quite follow what happened, let me sum it up. Basically, we originally tried to bait him at the relic site by bringing our seed, our magnate in and trying to scan down the relic site. I was going to warp to the relic site, and then when he ganked my magnate, have my two ships back him up. However, when I brought the magnate into the high hole, he immediately jumped on me before I could scan it down. So, what ended up happening was I jumped back through the hole and he cloaked up. He waited for a while, I brought both of my ships to the hole to watch, and after like 10 minutes or so, he decided to go through the hole to see if I'm on the other side. I am on the other side. He sees that, he jumps back into the wormhole, I follow him. Now. He's sitting in his system on the high sec connection wormhole. I am also sitting there with all three of my characters, two of them cloaked. On the seed, the magnate, I approach the wormhole to make it look like I'm about to go through, but I don't jump. Him, being, I guess in this case, greedy, or thinking that I'm a noob, decides to attack the 
magnet. And I wait about five seconds before I jump so that he thinks I'm not going to react. And then I uncloak the Proteus, tackle him, uncloak the, uncloak the Loki, and kill him. Uh, the reason he was dead there was because when he committed to kill the Magnate the second time, he couldn't go back through the wormhole. He had polarity. He was stuck right there with nowhere to go. So that's why I was happy that I was starting to understand polarity. All right, just had a conversation with the uh, with the CEO of that corp, and essentially they are going to try to fight back against. Warp drive active. And basically, they're cool with me recording it. Hopefully, my seed survives this time. I'm gonna see if they descan me. They probably will. But um, needless to say, we're gonna pull our PVP characters out of this hole. We're gonna be super satisfied with that fight that we did get there. That honestly, to me shows that we're getting better at the game we're understanding things we're starting to maybe experiment more take more risks so no matter how you look at it i'm super duper happy about that i just want to make it crystal clear these guys were great sports they clearly are not afraid to field ships and i highly respect their efforts out here i hope that they win the fight against Warp drive active. but I, I don't have any dog in the race right i don't i don't know any of these groups but at the same time i can't help but root for the underdog in this case so i will okay so i don't know how i did it but uh got another ghost site right away it's ridiculous how many times i have to do this without having my setup being complete but you know what i'd rather show them on camera mistakes and all than uh not do them and be paralyzed by fear so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna triple check we got everything take some nice deep breaths start a warp and we're just gonna relax if we die we die we don't die we don't die no big deal give it a whirl What the f- What the f- No, the Omega, the Omega, the Omega. Holy f- That's f***ing Omega. Leave. There's another can here with two blueprints in it. But I'm pretty sure this is the right one, right? High grade ascendancy omega. This is the the, the big money one, right? Am I tripping? We just nailed it. We just got the best loot in the game. From exploration. I was a little bit scared that this wasn't the right one, but this is is totally the right one. Holy f we just hit the lottery. I was a little bit like frazzled in the moment because the first can had the Omega in it. And I was like, wait a second, what the f But I already had started scanning the second can. And so my mind was immediately on this first can. But then the second one popped up with two more blueprints in it. So I'm sitting there going like, oh my God, what do I do? But then I just realized Omega, 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 that is the best one we can possibly get. That is the one we got to put all of our focus into. And we immediately stopped scanning. We didn't even scan cans three and four. And we 
went right for this one. I made sure I got in close and I was orbiting instead of approaching so I wouldn't run into it. And I got really lucky on the hack. And we moonwalked out with, oh my God, it's like three bill. And the components are only like 300 mil. Oh my God, we just did it. Oh, this poor Helios just missed out on the, f on the absolute bees knees why is this not gone yet why is that still there you see that all right i need to stop freaking out and get this stuff back to the orca can you imagine if i got both of those cans i closed it now but what was it like delta and another one i mean i don't think those are worth that much i'm gonna be honest with you guys because i had that other one and it was only like 80 mil but this is the one we did it can't believe it. Amazing. I'm trying to process what just happened there. There's so many things that could have gone wrong. Like my hacking's bad. I could have failed the hacking. I could have gone for the wrong can there out of panic. I could have gone for a second can like a noob and tried to double down. I could have taken too long and the Helios could have gotten there. I could have died on the way back. Now, I mean, the number of weak links are very low. Now it's just getting it to Jetta, which is pretty easy with a, cr with a crane or fighter or whatever you use. Wow, I just, I can't believe it, man. That's so wild. We just, we just went in. We just went in, man. Holy shit. Pinch me. See if we die here. Is it called there a shuttle? Okay. Two minutes and forty-nine seconds left. Somebody was logged in here. I think it was a gunner. But I don't know how this works very well. But I would assume that if you were gonna kill a building as an organized group, you would have whole control. This is an activity where uh matter what happens, we win. So I'm not nervous, but... I am curious. I can't believe these guys are not in combat ships ready to go. To be in shuttles and Gnosis... Magnates? Weird. They should be docked up in heavy armor right now. So they're undocking the defense fleet. How cool is that? Looks like they are ready to defend. So I have never personally seen a Gnosis Doctrine home defense, but I have to say, pretty funny. I like it. I mean, something like a Kikimura Flea would have a fit against this, I think, right? Wouldn't these Gnosis just chew them up? So in a way, maybe this isn't that bad. All right, they managed to keep their Athenor alive. I don't know if the group just decided not to come back or if they saw the numbers, but now we will face our fiery death. And see which one of these guys picks me up first. Oh, here they come. They got me. They got me.
Alright, so I kind of feel like getting a shot of this. Here we have a wormhole that is both crit and end of life. You will? Crit. Right? And if you look at this hole, we'll kind of do like a little look around. So the wisps are faint, as an end of life hole should be. The center is bouncing like an end of life hole is. But you see how the wisps are like poking out from it? There you go, you can see them now really well. See how they come out of the middle? I've only ever seen them when it's both of these states together. Both crit and end of life. I thought these wisps that came out of the middle like that were crit, but... I've also seen a lot of crit holes and never noticed that, so... I mean, either way, uh, I think when it's crit and end of life like this, it's kind of hard to tell how small the pupil is, but um, you can kind of still get a feel for it because the whites of the eye, if you will, go all the way up here. It's hard to see them. So I've kind of noticed that if you live in a system with a class 5 static, that very often you will get multiple of these h900s which is well for me it's an h900 because i'm in a class four but you'll get a lot of wormholes that point to class five uh so right now i already have a static class five but i just had another h900 open up here and this is a wandering hole we've labeled it as such but the reason why there's so many class 5 wormholes that pop up, it's just, it's simple. There's so many class 5s, right? I also suppose this would be a good time to show off the technique I was taught. So before we were turning our camera looking for citadels on the sensor, but you go up here and click on citadel a couple times. You'll notice right away, look at that, it starts pulsing. Immediately tells you where it is, right? You can do the same thing for engineering bays and uh, refineries and stuff. Okay, so we touched on it last episode, but this episode we ripped a three billion item, so we're gonna ball out a little bit. We went and picked up an Estero whose sole purpose is to speed run ghost sites. Um, I am still training hacking five, but I have enough points to level it to five right away if I wanted to. We'll probably just wait on it. Um, so once I get that, I'll be able to use this Zuma analyzer. And we combine that with the black glass, which gives it 20 strength takes away 40 health and we use another little cheap implant give it five more health and what we're left with is 60 power and enough health to not worry about it which will allow us to pretty much steamroll any ghost site that's in front of us we won't even have to really stop clicking hopefully we can just go through them so uh, ideally I'd like to test this. I can warp into the site at like 30 or 40 or something like that, and then land on a can, and then just like immediately start hacking. And I think I should probably have two cans finished by like 30 seconds. And then what would happen is because this ship is so fast, with the nanos, with the Astero hull, uh, with decent skills. Uh, there's no way I'm going to get caught on a can when I try to warp out. So essentially what you do is you hack all the cans and if the rats come you just click warp. Um, and it's just so fast that there's no way you're going to screw it up. This ship can tank m multiple cans exploding. So even if the rats come when we're in the middle of hacking we can just close the can and leave and just eat the shot. Like, 
This is probably the safest way to do it. Now, the trade-off is that you don't get the cargo scan, so you don't get the cherry pick. However, I know it's a bias, but since I just got the lottery drop, I kind of feel like, um, you know, my luck has run out, if you will. So I'm just going to try to speed run and get three cans on average. And I mean, the cans are like 50 to 100 mil each, right? Usually. So still getting a, a decent little clip per go site doing it this way. And you have a pretty good shot at hitting the lottery anyway. So I think this is probably the way to go, but we're going to test it and hopefully not lose this ship. Um, but I'll put uh, some of the techniques I was taught uh, into action here with this next time I find a ghost site. And then just to wrap it up, we still do have the cheetah, which we're going to use for regular relic and regular data sites. Uh, the cheetah is going to have uh, nullification, it's going to have a warp core stabilizer, and it's way cheaper, so we don't care about losing this. Um, and then other than that, uh, I think we're pretty much good on the uh, exploration front. We're getting there. So it's just got to get hacking five and be happy. You know, I think I should just record this. Because I managed to catch somebody that tries to gank my cheetah one day with the Proteus Intel. It's going to be the best footage ever. We made, I don't know, what is that? 85 mil? 89 mil? Nice. Oh yeah, we don't have sisters. Yeah, I kind of like this ship. This is now like my one-stop hacking shop. <laughs> kind of nice, actually. Uh, obviously, besides ghost sites, uh, this thing can now do data relic. It's super safe. It's super cheap. I mean, it's like a what is it? A thirty mil total ship. We don't care if this thing dies anymore. We got a rig for hacking, a rig for relics. We'll put the data two on there as soon as uh, we hit hacking five. And we took the sister's launcher off because we're not going to do much scanning in this ship, but it's, you know, still a fine backup. But we basically made this ship so that we genuinely, genuinely do not care if this thing dies. Nothing expensive on it, all the safety in the world, and um, we can worry about our ghost site set up with a completely different ship. I quite like that. I'm recording a bountiful or a vast frontier reservoir. Clearing in my Loki right now, just in case somebody ganks me. We have the Proteus here, ready to rock. Doubtful though. Just need to focus on two things, descanning and having a way out if you see something. So for us, we're just descanning and keeping our cursor over the per tour line too. It's basically the, the whole play here. And since we're inside of a cloud, like the other time in last episode, uh, it's going to be hard for someone to catch us. It's not to say they can't, but it would be hard, that's for sure. And then we'll come back here in some ventures and uh, have a jolly old time. You could always warp the Proteus in here and clap up this last one instead of reloading, but I much prefer to just take my time to do it right rather than adding more variables. I also really like VFRs because even though the C32 has tanked in price, um, the rats don't attack my drones, which is my kryptonite, so... <laughs> So pretty much, as long as you don't hit my drones, I'm okay with ratting. I hate managing drones and targets, it's boring. Not my thing. Alright, another clear. We're in the, in the safe. Feels good. I have no idea how many of you know this. If it's 100%, I apologize. But if it's even 99%, then, um... I'm gonna be okay to show this. So... Um, usually on your character, you have your camera, you can go first person, right? There's also a third camera setting, right? 
and that is a tactical camera. So it kind of acts a bit like the orbit camera until you use a right click button and that allows you to pan the scene, right? On a normal character, this is as far as you can zoom out, right? You can zoom out to here. So all three of these characters, that's as far as I can zoom out. On the main, with the tactical camera, you go to the max zoom, and then you pan anywhere. You just do any amount of panning, even a little tiny bit, and then you zoom out, and you can zoom out way more. I mean, look at this. You can make the whole site a little dot, so. I use this for these gas sites so that it's not so big, and I can see people warping in on my main. But um, there's other uses for this too. And it makes a hell of a cinematic camera. I mean, you can kind of just freely manipulate it, especially when you get good with it. So I know I've been at this for weeks and weeks and weeks now, but um, I think it's just starting to hit me, some of the changes that they made to the game. Most notably the economic ones. It honestly seems like the sweeping majority of the methodologies that people use to generate ISK, I guess farming techniques would be the non smarmy way to put that. Um, a lot of those are nerfed and they don't pay that well. Like V and I ratting was like the low tier before, but it seems like Ishtar ratting is really not that much more. And then you got to deal with these like ESS things. And overall, it just seems like a total nightmare to put your alts to work for uh, active income. Um, also, Plex is like two bill a month now to subscribe after the subscription change. So I am coming in on, I guess, the tail end of an era that I missed of, of course, uh, scarcity, but um, it seems like at the end of the scarcity sprint, I started and then they immediately raised the prices. So I kind of came at an interesting time where there's not much isk in the game comparatively. And also it's more expensive to subscribe. So in a way, the reason I'm talking about all this is because um, essentially this gas mining that we're doing is way better than I ever thought it was. I thought we were out here making like pennies, you know, like a couple days of non-stop gas making a bill or two. I felt like that was a total waste of time on the grand scheme of things. And to be fair, before you call me out on it, I know it is compared to stuff like uh, dread ratting in class fives, etc., and station trading, right? But this compared to a lot of the stuff people do nowadays is actually really good income, like really good income. And it's pretty amazing to me. Everything is about different in terms of, you know, how much ships cost and how much they are to replace and everything and it seems as though my style of being stingy with ships and generally being safe and executing plans instead of dealing with the unknown it seems like it's better now than it ever was because truthfully uh trying to like replace like a carrier right now or an orca or uh even like marauders and stuff like that's a fair amount of work to do especially if you're a solo player i mean that that's a lot of work so um we're gonna look at i guess what we need to do out here to stay in the black as in not uh fall behind to our liabilities because we haven't like gone into it in depth but you know, we have to pay fuel costs, we have to pay Omega subscription costs, um, you know, ammo, supplies, paste, all that stuff. Um, you have to factor all that in. Taxes. Uh, and then you have to factor that in, and you also have to look at how much time it takes you to do all that, the labor costs of it. And um, what I'm discovering is we might not need the fourth account. Um, I made it at a time when I was still quite unsure as to how the economy was functioning. But, um, we might not need it. So what I'm going to do is not assume I know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm going to test it. I'm going to let my, my fourth account, this guy, Mipdura, I'm going to let her, uh, run out of Omega here in under 24 hours. And then what I'm going to do is get my third character sitting in a PvP ship 
get him up to snuff. And then if I find that my gas intake is too low, after I get my third character back up, we're gonna reactivate the fourth character to get that income and then start working on her as a fourth EVP pilot. Now, when we only have three accounts, um, we lose a, a little. We lose a little bit of the ability to uh, have a couple extra pair of eyes and stuff like that. But ultimately, we have not developed our fourth account very far whatsoever. And we're at 2.8 mil skill points, which is actually a fair amount. But um, ultimately, right now, all this guy does is mine gas. That's what he's trained into. She. Um, and then one day, well. I'll just let you look at the screen and figure out what we're doing with him one day. But, uh, ultimately, we're going to go down to three characters. That experiment's going to last about two weeks. And if I find I want the fourth, we're going to turn it back on and resync him with my other accounts. Pretty simple. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, here's a new one. Currently logged out. I still have a local channel. Alright, I can't type anything. <laughs> what? Who's... Whose local am I in? Like, what local am I in right now? Interesting, this game object did not get destroyed, clearly. Alright, I gotta log in to see what happens with this local box. Oh! Oh, it's gone now. That was weird. Yeah, so I was originally trying to, um... sell... both of my Ascendancy implants, the Omega and the Delta. I was trying to sell them in contracts, but... It's been a day and I'm kinda getting cold feet so um we went ahead and started making both of the implants now i'm probably not gonna lose money on making the small one but i used it as a pilot to understand how modern industry works so i made the first one and now i'm making the big one as well so in an hour i'm gonna have the actual implant now i have to sell it on the market and if you're not up to date on how much this stuff costs on the market, I mean, it's pretty insane. Right, so this was just at 3.3. It looks like someone may have purchased one. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are buying these today. Four got bought today. So if we sell it at like 3.3, we can reasonably expect to, expect to sell it. And I think the taxes are only going to be no more than... 8%, right? 10%? So we'll, we'll say like a 300. So we're probably going to get 3 bill off this. Uh, minus like, what was it? 50, 60 mil for the contract fees I wasted. 14 mil industry cost. Hauling labor. Blah, 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 blah. We're still clo close to clearing 3 bill on this. So assuming we're able to actually produce it and sell it in a timely fashion, this was one of the most insane experiences I've ever had at EVE. Okay, for the high grade delta, the split between buy and sell is so small that we're just gonna offload it immediately. Delta, 260 mil. And then we put in 180 million. So we got 80 million. Yeah, it's about what our contract was. Um, and then for this guy, let's be careful I don't plug it in or trash it or something. If we go to market, the spread is really large. See how large that spread is? Um, I'm not like an economist. I'm not like the best trader in the world. I have traded in games for as long as I've been conscious. So I understand how the basics work. However, in this case, here's what I think we should probably consider doing. So earlier today, there was one or two of these at 3.3 billion, right? And those presumably sold. So if we look at Oh, so that's yesterday. Four sold yesterday on an average of 3.3. So if we go back a bit, it looks like, I don't know, for a couple months now, it's been around that 3.3, maybe a little bit under 3 bill, right? So I suspect that nobody's going to be willing to pay this price for it. Because they're going to see the history and be like, dude, no way. That's 400, 500 million overpriced but i think because that price is there i think i could probably list this at 3.4 billion and even though it's a bit higher than the going rate because the only other alternatives are these somebody might pick it up if we're a little bit lucky i mean when you're dealing with players this stuff who the hell knows right it could be anything 
But what we'll try to do is sell this three months at a rate of 3.399. Do a little bit of uh, psychology there. And what this would do is give me 3.1 billion, which is more than my contract, which was 2.89 billion. Assuming somebody bites on this. Now, if they don't bite, we're gonna have to eat another broker's fee to reset it as many times as possible. So if we end up making three point some billion, but we had to do a bunch of broker fees along the way, this might be not worth it compared to the contracts. However, uh, I think the market is more likely to sell it. I think more people engage in the market than contracts, even for stuff like this. So with that said, I think we will do one last little refresh on it. Market details. Yeah, I think we'll list this. All right. 3.39 billion, boom. Now, here we are. That's so much cheaper than the next one that somebody that needs this might just grab it even though it's still overpriced. That's my rationale, but we'll see. Um, hopefully I'll be able to report back and say that we sold this right away. But worst case scenario, this will still be on the market <laughs> when, uh, when this video is published at a later date. So, uh, let's see how that goes. Hopefully we sell it. So this is very unusual. There appears to be somebody in my system. Since I've moved to... this class 4... I've seen maybe... maybe two people in the system. Of course, there's probably been more, but... I've only seen signs of two people. So this is very unusual. Oh, looks like they're scanning down to class three. Maybe I should warp there. All eight probes are within one of this signature right now. Okay, so he's off of this signature. Now perhaps onto this one or this one oh it's gonna be oat oh I suspect now we can watch these fill up in real time yeah he's literally scanning this one yep see see how many probes are there now all right let's go there now you know, I do a lot of scanning, and I never quite think about how easy it is to track what I'm doing. Now he's going to go for this one. You can literally watch somebody scan their entire system down. <laughs> There's all eight in the tight cone. Alright, so he's got that scan now. He's got all three of these signatures. And probably this one, too. Because the probes were there in the first place. You know when you watch them, when you scan something down on D-Scan like this? It always feels like they're going really slow. But it's not always the case. As a solo player especially, you probably don't want to kill people. There's the probes, they're down here. <laughs> probably don't want to kill people in the system you're living in, right? Because it kind of pollutes the kill board, makes it obvious you live here. Alright, so he's currently scanning down this sig now. Or one of these. Maybe this one? Yep, that one. So he's gonna get the class 5 sig. Okay, he's off of that one. Now, this one? Or did he already get that one? Okay, so he's got all those. I guess this is the last one. He goes from the inside out, maybe? Okay, no probes over here. So, I guess he's actually done done. Disturbing when you have somebody in your system like this, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm, so if they didn't scan this down, maybe that's actually where they were. Maybe I should put the produce there instead. Because we saw them scan down these three. We assume they scanned on this one because of the probes earlier. We watched them get this one. And 
perhaps they got this one before I warped. So the only one they didn't scan was maybe this one. So there's a chance if we go there again, even though we were just here. Okay. Well, we'll uh, I'll do a little more recording if I happen to catch a whiff of somebody, or rather, where that somebody may have been coming from, and or what ship they're in, and or what they want, and or if I can kill them, and or. Okay, so I have popped into my class two static and noticed somebody scanning. So I've pulled both of my strategic cruisers to this wormhole and put a set of combat and a set of core probes off to the side. The system seems fairly quiet. No more probes, okay. How funny would that be one day if we hit our probes like over here to keep them off D-scan? And somebody had like a really deep safe over there with like an orca in it and they just happened to see those probes, they'd probably flip out. Guess I'll have a quick fly around here. See if we notice anything. Citadels, no refineries, no engineering complexes. So that's an interesting sign. Interesting. So how much you want to bet one of those is a data or relic? doing them right now. So the question is, I've descanned it on this guy, and we need to now bring the Proteus there. It's going to be hard to do. We would love to get it right here, so we one-shot the Astero. So that's a perfect re resolution scan right on his face. Run it. And we'll try to immediately hide the probes. Warp. Took forever to warp. See if we can get him. That was a bit sloppy, I, I would I would say, but he's at a relic site. And he's off D-scan. We lost him, guys. We were a little slow. We're probably gonna decloak here, right? Yep. It was a good good attempt. But uh, we were a little bit slow, and he also totally did notice. Yeah, combat probe, so good for him. I don't want to spend 700,000 skill points. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Thank you. Well, it appears as though we have a class 13 here in our system. Which hasn't happened in quite some time. I think we got really lucky with class 13s early on. Um, now we do have the Sveeple. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm not going to bring the Sveeple in first. I'm going to bring the Cheetah in first so I can hack all the sites. That makes more sense. And we'll hop into the Cheetah. Go back to the C-13. We see you, log you out. I don't think we're going to need Mr. Proteus for this one, so we can log him out too. Guy lost a 1 billion pod here. It was in a vet. Whoa. What? Look at this. It's right here. You lost a bill worth of implants. Like, I don't think he meant to be wearing these when he was in Adventure. Alright, so let's see. It looks like a guy named Wormholer 1 and 2 live here. And gank people. I mean, he just lives in this hole, it looks like. Oh, is this another? Does he have characters in multiple shatters? Is that what it is? What's funny is, that's actually something we're doing as well. We're putting seeds in all the shatters we find. We already have one in a class 5 shattered, and we're going to have one in this one, too. It is tempting to like, put a venture on the... Arm hold for a little bit with the people on the other side or something, but I think he can get out. What's wild is the guy that lives in here, he hunts at exactly this time. Every day. Every day, this is when he plays. For like two hours. 
there's like actually a non-zero chance we might run into this guy. Okay, so there's no data, relic, gas, or anything in here. This is completely cleared out. Which begs the question... How do I kill this guy that lives in here? Yeah, so the chances of baiting this guy is super low, but... Whoa, there's more probes out? Now what I would like to happen would be this guy to immediately bite on my my poor little venture. That would be amazing. We gotta really sell it though. We're gonna drop our probes and stay put. As soon as somebody shows up here, we don't even don't even we just flip back, jump through, and then start warping. Because this people is not cloaky. So we basically need to let him know we're here with the probes. And then he should start going from celestial to celestial to look for me. And hopefully he comes out and tries to gank me. This would work better if there was a relic site and I had an extra hacking ship, because then I could really sell it. Right now it looks a bit looks a bit obvious. Okay, there are now two sets of sister probes. You see this? There's two sets. And they're awfully close to me. This might actually work. The only thing that would make it better would be seeing combat scanners right now, but... You always wonder in these situations is, is it my username giving it away? Is it my ship name giving it away? Is it my behavior giving it away? Because with two people in the system right now, if one of them was our boogeyman, he could totally have been on me by now if he wanted to be. So, because I'm in the business of making guesses, there's a chance that that dude is scanning down the entire system with both of his characters right now. Like one tab out, do another seg, tab out, do another seg, that kind of thing. So there's a chance he's just getting the whole system for the day because it's about his playtime. Looks like he plays when he gets off of work or something like that for a couple hours. So he might be scanning everything down from a deep safe. Like here, who knows? Or here, there's a lot of spots for deep safes in here. And um, he might try still to gank me. It's just hard to say. You really never know. This could just be two people that happen to hop into a C-13 and scan it down. Yeah, I'm thinking I need more base ships because although this is like rare, finding a C-13, trying to bait on a venture with a people backup, uh, this idea is actually probably going to be the way we get most of our really good kills is by baiting. Since as a solo player, the ability to control the number of people in the field is very limited without psychology. So, I suspect that we're going to be doing more of this. Clearly no bait there. Why would you even assume that's bait? That's not bait. I'm just chilling for 20 minutes AFK at a celestial. Don't mind me. We chillin'. We might leave and come back. Not sure. Also a bit of a dud C-13, but that's okay. It was a good idea. And I had a real decent shot at working. Oh man, do I just stay a bit longer? Oh, maybe not. It doesn't play every day. I was looking at the time of day. Here, let me just show you. This is, what, this is the Warhol, it's just 10. Last 13. Oops, this one. So... Last 13, and you see this guy, Wormholer 2, in a uh, pacifier, picking up kills. And I saw like 23, 22, and I thought it was recent, but uh, it looks like there's huge gaps in his resume here. So, he's not like an everyday player, probably. And even if he was playing every day, he wouldn't get kills every day. So either way, I mean, it's, it's, it's a crapshoot. It's such a hard kill to get. It's such a unique kill to get. I'm trying to dive somebody in a C-13 with Venture Bait. But, um... I think we'll back off for now. And then, uh... Seed that hole. So, one of the things that I wanted to do... As a side quest of sorts... Was to... Every time I find a Shattered, 
or otherwise interesting hole. I want to put a seed inside of it and maintain those seeds. So what we've done with this class 13 is made a seed for it. And we try to name the seeds kind of what the system name is, just for uh, organizational purposes. But it really doesn't matter. You could name this whatever the heck you want. Doesn't really matter. But now he's in the C13, and this is an alpha account, right? So what this lets us do is anytime we want to get back to the system, we can scan our way out with the alpha. And then uh, note down the signatures and scan our way in with our main. And we can do this with, uh, obviously, shattered holes and C13s, which are also shattered. But we can do it with more creative things, too. We can find, like, a, an alliance, like their main headquarters. We could put a seed in there. We could continue dropping seeds in vulnerable systems uh, for potential content. We could conceivably seed systems that are... Uh, desirable is maybe what I would call that. So, um, basically, number one priority is to put a seed in every shattered we come across, but there might be more opportunities to seed systems. And as long as we log into them every couple months on the alphas, then um, pretty much no issues. They won't get teleported out, hopefully. So, to recap, we have just put this character inside of a class 13 and if we ever want to come back here we can now scan our way back in how cool is that oh my god 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 I think it happened did we do it did we sell it Oh, shit. We sold it. Let's go. So, we sold the um, implant. Wow, I couldn't remember what it was. Now, we did have to drop the price by 200 million because um, other people were trying to undercut me, which is fair. You kind of expect it, right? But I originally had it at 3.4 bill, and then this fella set it at 3.2, and then I undercut him with 3199, and then this guy undercut me, or person I should say. Um, so we ended up undercutting him by 1 million isk, 3197, and that was about two hours ago, I want to say, and then somebody bought it. So, when this rolls over to 27, or I don't know how it works, this will eventually reflect that somebody bought the implant from me. So, now, what this means is, we have a bunch of money in the corp bank, right? We also have a bunch of gas in the orca, and we have a bunch of gas here. We have about 500 mil worth of gas in our container. We're going to start stockpiling this now. Remember a while ago I said that we're going to sell when the... Strike when the iron is hot, I think I said, right? We're going to sell this stuff only when the price is nice now, right? And we're also going to sell both regular compressed gas and un decompressed gas, which we'll have to... So we're going to actually keep some of this, because you can actually play both markets. You can sell compressed gas. So we're going to have a stack of compressed, a stack of uncompressed of every type, and when I notice the price goes up, we're going to jump in there and sell it all remotely from Jitta. Uh, we also have some hacking loot here that I didn't do. So um, basically what I'm trying to say is we have, you know, a fair amount of isk to play with now. And if I'm being honest, we should probably just dump this into Plex as soon as possible because I'm sure it's still going up. Oh, it's kind of on a little bit down. We'll probably dump at least half of our ISK into Plex, since we do use Plex for this setup. But, it's pretty dope that we were able to get this and sell it, and everything worked out. We made a ton of money off of it. Um, and now we get to breathe a little bit, and we can start doing our stockpiles and play the market and have a more 
enjoyable overall experience. So, overall pretty thrilled about that. And thank you to this guy. Bostos. Appreciate you, King. Holy shit, Praxis just landed at this high sack connection. I'm gonna go for it if he jumps. I think he's gonna wait to go. I think he saw the probe. Totally saw the probe. I don't know if he saw the ship, though. Either way, the Proteus is coming to back up the, uh, prac or the Loki here. I say we go for it. At this point, we only have two minutes left of polarization. Oh, he's gonna warp off to... to what? To R and E? Or no, no, we're at R and E. Where are you going? Went to a customs office. It's funny, the Loki was cloaked, I think. I don't know if he even saw me on G-Scan, but he totally saw my probe. I did the circle scan around me, and it puts a probe, like, on grid. He just totally saw it. That's nice. He's at, like, a quasi-safe. Oh, there's two Praxi? Oh my gosh. Right, I'm going back to the hole at 10. They want to go in there. It's not guaranteed that these guys come in here, but... Oh. Oh, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? Did you just jump into a hole? So, okay, is what happened? They were gonna go into the wormhole, they saw my probe chickened out, and now they docked up, logged out. Is that what happened here? Man, I was really hoping that we were gonna kill those Praxis. That's crazy. Yo, we were already here like two or three weeks ago in this same system. Wanna know how I know? Watch this. Remember this? Remember this building we looked at? Same one. happens is Pathfinder actually stores the notes you save on each system and I saw this pop up as MGLA uh, headquarters that's pretty nuts okay so that was really fun you can't tell by my voice that was sarcasm please don't be dead okay he's alive how about you? Oh, both my characters are alive. My internet... Uh, kinda sorta shit the bed. And I was in space in my Loki in another system. Next to a wormhole. And on my crane, I was like... A jump or two from Jitta? With 500 mil in my cargo. <laughs> when I disconnected, so... Yeah, that was a little nerve-wracking. So it looks like this Laser Hawks group is using this high sec hole I'm camping. So they're bringing Kimoras in and out. And I even saw where they went. They went to... Went to this. It almost makes me wonder if maybe... Oh, Jesus. Even more coming in. There's like no chance I would catch that before it warped, sadly. And I'm on a high sec hole. And I'm dealing with laser hawks, which... They quite obviously have been around a while. Yeah, they just inst the warp Kikimura so fast. You need a bubble. Maybe they'll bring something big through here, who the hell knows. Yeah, see how he warped to that class 2 wandering? Oh, there's another one. And he's gonna warp. 
Yep. Class 2 Wanderer. Gotta say, I wonder what's in there, but that's awfully dangerous. The fact that they're just running their ships with no name change. Interesting. It's like the fourth one I've seen with no name change. I'm not above camping the, camping this hole. I saw Praxis come up, I was like, wait, what? That's, that's our food right there. I mean, yeah, laser hawks. Big group. They'd probably dumpster anything I tried to do, but they're not immune to losing a ship here or there, right? No big group is. Yo, we got some people combat scanning us down. Look at this. They really want me. They're going for the one. What perch here? Yeah, I totally do. See if we make it. <laughs> Look at all these people. Just nuts. All right, we're we're getting the hell out of here. Look at them all. Good lord. Alright, so they totally saw where I went. Let's see if we can pop through. And, um... Get the hell out of here. Yeah, we knew this place was hot. We gotta be quick though, going through here. Oh, look at that. I don't think he'll get me. <laughs> look how close they were. That was so close. Wow, they really want me. Alright, let's log off. Wow, that was crazy close. Good lord. Okay, we'll log out and come back with the strategic cruisers. And, uh... Hang out. See what these guys are up to. I can't believe they had so many people gank some ventures. That was cray cray. And I was literally like one or two server ticks away from getting caught there. <laughs> How wild is that? Yeah, that was so scary. I mean, yeah, they're just ventures, but we've never lost any ventures yet. They're pretty hard to lose if you're paying attention. Oh, did they come out of here? Oh, shit. Yeah, it looks like they're just chilling. Here's what I want to do. Alright. I'm going to put combat scanners out. Then... We will... Get this SIG with combats. Make it really obvious we're still here. Let's see if they want to screw with that. That was pretty pretty nuts gank, honestly. Uh, my adrenaline's still going. Even though it's just ventures, I mean... Alright. So, basically, what I suspect happened was it came from this hole right here. And they scanned my system down when I was mining gas, or saw me log on. They could have seen me log on and followed me into the class two. They de-scanned me down. They saw I was at the gas site. They set up their probes perfectly, did a one or two shot on me, and then they warped, a, they fleet warped a light catcher to me, which is a good way to catch ventures, by the way. Um, so I was really close to losing at least one, maybe two ventures there, but we managed to warp to a perch really quickly. And we did make a mistake by warping directly to the hole, but I think it actually worked in our favor this time. Because I think that's where they came from. The flycatcher was like right behind us, like one or two ticks again behind us, so... 
Um, that's the kind of stuff that we, we talk about when we say you have to permanently de-scan when you do stuff. Um, obviously you lose ventures, who gives a shit? But uh, it's really just the practice. We want we want the practice. So yeah, we'll keep monitoring these guys and see if there's any more action. There's an Astero now. There was an Astero for a second. But we'll see if there's any more action and then that'll be that. I'm not gonna jump on any of these guys. They have a lot of ships. They have quick, quick action and um, they're clearly better than I am, so. But we will watch them and we'll try to figure out what they're doing, where they came from. Uh, yeah. All right, we have another shattered system here. We have a class two shattered with a high sex static. And we're gonna scan it down and see if we can find anything cool from it. Uh, we did find one thing, which was a mobile tractor unit right here which is at a site, and we're gonna pop that, but first we're gonna scan the system down. Bam, that's a vital core reservoir right there. It's a good chunk of change if it's not been ninja already. Oh, look at all this gas in here, this is good stuff. Might be busy for a while after all. All right, so we're gonna find the high sec, we're gonna scan down the relics, the gas, do the relics, do the gas, go high sec. Nice, easy plan. Hey, we did it. Warp you off. Loot that. 400k. Oh no. It's a disaster. Got that sweet kill mail. You know, that's that's what matters. That sweet, sweet. Look at that. See, that's what we play for. Okay. So, we have... Um, been mining some gas. We have uh, bought a little bit of Plex. We bought 500 of it. Uh, we've been farming gas. Not a whole lot of blue loot. Not a whole lot of hacking stuff, as we know. But you can kind of see that we're starting to stockpile this a little bit more. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's nine types of gas. We have all nine types right here. Very little of some of it, right? But, um, what we're able to do now is play the market for all of this. Pretty much all, every single type of gas compressed or decompressed, we now have a little bit of. And we can start to, when I'm bored or don't feel like scanning stuff or doing active gameplay, I can just sit, like, you know, on the laptop, chilling, and look at prices of stuff. And if I see, like, oh my gosh, like... Okay, that's going down, for example. I can sit here and tinker with stuff and basically get that full station trading experience and also make a bunch of money on the on the side because whenever we sell stuff, we will be getting the best price for it instead of just whatever the market wants to pay us at the time. So overall, we've made a ton of progress with the economics of the account. Super duper happy about it. We're gonna keep building this. Um, we'll probably just stockpile hacking loot for fun. There's really no need to stockpile it. Most of the prices are pretty stable. Blue loot, we'll just get a bunch of it and then take a trip out to an NPC station and sell it. Uh, and other than that, I think we're, we're chugging along. We're making good progress with the ability to sustain our accounts out there with just gas. We dropped down to three accounts, which I think is cool for now because we're still working on our third pilot. Um, he's gonna be in a pilgrim within a week and then we're gonna eventually move him to a legion. But definitely pretty cool. I love having stuff in Jitter that I can play with now. Huge bonus for me. I get enjoyment out of that. All right, guys. So I've literally run out of time. I try to keep these under 80 minutes and despite tons and tons of trimming and editing and removing content that's not engaging. 
we have still hit the limit in a week. So, let's do a recap here. In this episode, we got our biggest lottery drop ever. We got our biggest kill mill ever. Uh, we got to check out several instances of the ships in the night kind of thing. And we showed how we're going to start seeding all of the shattered or otherwise interesting holes that we find. So, overall, I'm pretty thrilled with what we've done in this episode. We've managed to make a bunch of isk and do a bunch of new cool things. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, uh, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope to see you in the next one.